Hey ho, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We have a fabulous show for you guys today. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have Kevin Spiritas. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, so we're going to find out. And Sean Kanan, both on the show today. Both are uh, acting icons with several Emmys and uh, nominations and all kinds of stuff, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Before we get started, we have a chat room that's filling up, and we have to say hello to everyone. But first, we're going to say hello to our cool, outrageous Man About Town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Everyone loves getting head, okay? I don't love getting a head cold. (laughs) So I have a head cold. I'd rather get head than a head cold. New York City was freezing, raining, horrible, and cold. And I got sick there. I'm sorry that my last memory of going to New York as a vacation is of freezing cold weather. But the truth is the truth. You'll take Manhattan because I don't want it anymore. Anyway, I'm happy in California where the sun is beautiful and shining and I can feel healthy. So there you go. So hopefully you will. So let's say hi to our chat room. Um, we've got B. Claudia just joined us. She says, feel better, Ron. She's in Germany. Teresa Sabin, she's in Florida. Angela Joseph is here, and she's in Colorado. Uh, Boomer Mays is here, football player extraordinaire. Cindy Lady Lake is in Florida. Eileen Shapiro, she's in New woo, York. Woo, 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 woo. And um, let's see. I, it went, it went, oh, back, I, I think I saw Backpack John in there before. Um, so, hey, Backpack John, everybody who's there, thank you. They said you look fantastic. Oh, and Lady Lake. Lady Cindy Lady Lake, who's been missing for about a month because she's been under the weather. So we're so happy to I have her back. I thought she was kidnapped by lesbians. <laughs> yeah. So Cindy is back, and I know she's excited because she thinks Sean Cannon's really cool, and he always says hi to her, so he likes and it. And he so. is cool. He is very cool. Now, listen, you see my hair, too? I look like I went to a Forest Hills beauty parlor, and I had some fag do my hair. Oh, Susie, you can't use that word. I had some <laughs> homosexual <laughs> boy comb my hair. What happened was I washed my hair in the shower. I went outside naked and I sat on my patio to get sun on my operation. Well, the the heat makes my hair swell that I look like, look, it looks like something. I look like Rona Barrett. (laughs) uh, No, really. actually, Actually, a lot of them are probably old enough to know who Rona Barrett is. Yeah, I'm sure enough. But anyway, my hair looks like it was teased and sprayed and positioned. No. Watch. Yeah, it goes right through it. It's just the way it is. And it goes right back. So there you go. My sister used to be so jealous of me growing up. She said, you got the beautiful legs. You got the long eyelashes. And you got the perfect hair that no matter what you do, it looks like you had it styled. And I said, well, what can I tell you, honey? You know, some get breaks, some don't. That's why she hasn't spoken to me in 45 years. But anyway. That's funny. Teresa says too much conditioner, maybe. <laughs> no, no, I don't use conditioner. I use pat- Pantene shampoo. I go outside wet and I come back in. My hair is like, like a Zulu. It just swells. The heat gets in there and it makes it bigger than big. I have a lot of hair to begin with. But, so you know, so it kind of becomes times a problem because I look like I'm in drag. And these earphones look like earrings. All I need is a beauty mark. <laughs> No, a beauty mark and lipstick, and I could do, I'm looking for trouble, and I don't care what the people say. It doesn't matter what the people say, what the people say, what the people say. See how quick I could change to abroad? So Teresa Saban says she has to run for an appointment. Wish her luck. So oh, we're wishing Teresa, you luck. be careful of those lesbians. But we thank you for all you do, Teresa. You're fabulous. Also, Stefan Bell is... Uh, Texting me that he's here too. So what's up, Stefan? So everybody is good. Stefan, the lucky man. He's the luckiest man in the world. He's got Tina. Tina is a joy and a delight, and I adore her. Tina's his. Uh, is he? Are they married or just fucking around? Um, I think they're like fucking around. Oh, you know what, <laughs> Stefan? You should marry her. I mean, you know, throwing that over. When us. they say they love our colors, yeah, pink. But somebody's gonna come along and snap that Tina Dame up. You better move it. I wonder if Don is here. Is Don here? I don't know if Don is Don, in here. Oh, well, away. anyway, just because she'll watch the repeat, so show her your watch because you have your pink one on. I have my pinky stinky watch to match my pinky. I have all little, what are these people on my shirt? Flamingos. Flamingos. Pink flamingos. Pink flamingos. So today I really look like a fairy. 
with all the pink and the hairdo and, and whatever. B had something wrong with her eyes, so now she's got a patch on her eye like a pirate. Oh, that's that's effective. <laughs> Good luck, B. I hope that that gets better. Especially quick. if you go into a bank with a mask and a patch <laughs> yeah. and one eye. You know, you can rob the place. They'll call you the one eye burglar. No, this is Don's at a doctor's appointment, so we'll just say hi to Don. Don, hey, go Don. to the doctor. Make sure he's a good <laughs> doctor because most doctors stink. So I don't know if you guys have been watching anything cool, but we watched the Kaminsky Method, the third season. It was a lot of fun. It started out slow, but it got no, better. it started out as an older person's storyline. Then they today they're combining young junk and nice elderly stuff the uh, older storyline was terrific but the minute they brought in the young people it became trashy vulgar druggy and and crappy so what they're saying to in these films is that years ago we were elegant and terrific and the kids today are crap garbage and whatever and in a way it sends out a very bad message now i love jane smart I think Jane. Oh, Smart, Hacks. That's a TV show. Yeah, Hacks. I think Jane Smart should have been in Sex in the City, replacing Samantha because she looks just like her, and she's older, and they could have gotten away with it. So instead of looking for somebody else to play Samantha, anyone out there listening in the biz, get Jane Smart. She's fabulous. She's exactly a lookalike of what's her name? Samantha. No, the the real name. I forgot her name. I forgot but... her name. We imagine we forget her name. Well, she's not nice, so it's easy to forget. <laughs> I'll look it up. But anyway, that also has an older audience theme, which I thoroughly enjoy her. I love when Jane Smart comes on. When the girl, the co-star girl comes on, I want to turn it off. She's annoying. She's obnoxious. Kim Cattrall. She... Kim Cattrall. This girl is annoying, obnoxious, vulgar. She does cocaine, Thanks, she lady. smokes pot, she takes pills, she screws a guy, he jumps out a window. That kind of storyline stinks. So if you have to give that to the young people today, you're sending the wrong message to them. At least Jane Smart, she gives you a good... Hilarious and she's gorgeous. A good, and she's beautiful and she gives a good uh, message. But when you see people doing cocaine, having sex, pot and pills and drinking, and then the guy throws himself right through a window because he was stoned out of his bird. What? No, because he stole money from old people. Yeah, I know that, but doesn't matter what the reasoning was. The reasoning was he went through the friggin' window. And it, it doesn't make sense to do this today. Let's show young people decent and maybe without doing drugs and maybe not so promiscuous, let's teach them that it's okay to be square or vanilla. You don't have to be hip and you don't have to be a girl that uses the word fuck every sentence. It's not becoming. I do it because I'm a comic and I'm old. But a young, beautiful girl that's saying fuck every two minutes just looks like a cheesy tramp as far as I'm concerned. And the right is that right that beautiful story. What is it called? The, the thing? Hey, Hacks. Hack, hacks. Watch it. It's a great show. The writers are all young jerks who think, oh, it's hysterical. It's so funny. Let's write it because it's cool, man. Cool. Now they think it's cool. When they're my age, they'll be ashamed of what they wrote because that happens as you get older. You start to realize that vulgarity, promiscuity, and drugs are not the answer. They only it's still entertaining, though. We enjoyed it. I don't care for that drug shit. I don't like the drug shit either. I don't like the, all that vulgarity. And I, I mean, I use I curse more than anybody on the planet Earth, but I do it with humor. Actually, you don't even curse as much as they do. <laughs> no, I really don't because it, imagine when it offends me. You know, it's got to be offensive. So I wish that Hollywood would stop making young people out to be common, dirty mouthed and promiscuous because not all young kids are that way there are millions of young kids who are raised properly and taught not to behave that way and enough of this lecture it's but still a fun show to watch so watch Hacks it's a wonderful show and watch the kaminsky method because it's really good and hub reynolds jr just joined us hey hub what's up hope everything is well yeah hub agrees with me i know hub i know hub's thinking but um uh, Kaminsky, it got better on the third show. They cleaned it up a little bit, and the storyline went back. Now that Al, that what's his name died? What's his name? Quick, quick, quick. Alan. Oh, I don't know. Alan, Alan, mm -hmm, the co-star. Alan, oh my God, and I like him. He was a wonderful actor. 
is gone. He really passed away. No, they, he didn't. Yes, he did die. He died, Jimmy. He's dead. Alan Arkin is dead. Um, anyway, now that he's passed away, they had to do it on the show. They lost a very important part of that show because Alan Arkin was really genuinely a very... He's not dead. He is dead. He is not. It would be on here. He's 87 years old. He's not dead. They just took him out of it. Maybe he didn't want to be it or maybe he's ill or something, but no, he's not Alan dead. No, Alan Arkin died. He did not. Your thing is wrong. It is not wrong. Everybody out there, did Alan Arkin die? No, he didn't die. He's not dead. Maybe I read he died on the show. He died on the show. Maybe that's what I read. And, I, and you know, I get confused. Well, anyway, Alan Arkin, if you're not dead, get back on that show. It needs you. Yeah, he's still alive. It's on the internet. He's not dead yet. He was he he really made the show funny. So yeah. they lost a little bit when they killed him off, but hey. Well, I it's still know, fun though. It's still a fun show. Yeah, sometimes actors don't get along. I mean, look at Kim Cattrall, how she's destroying sex in the city because she thinks that uh what's her face? Uh the blonde. Sarah Jessica Sarah Parker. Jessica Parker didn't respond to her brother when he died or whatever. I mean, how stupid. A personal issue you bring to the set. And everybody says he's alive. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I might have read that Alan Arkin died, you know. In mean, Kaminsky in, method. In the Kaminsky thing. And I got it. Well, see how rumors start? <laughs> yeah. Well, the rumors started. Yeah, especially since a lot of people listen. <laughs> no, but the room, but now you know the rumors about me being a homo are just a rumor. Yeah. <laughs> they started years ago, those rumors, and they just build. But build um, up and up and up, and they keep going. Yeah, but I mean, so there's a couple of things on TV that are well worth watching. Um, not much. We watch movies. Any good movies we've seen? Yeah, we saw an old movie that we liked the other day. What was it? I I, I forgot. Imagine the two of us. We haven't got one brain. Between. No, it was with the guy from, uh, um, from Colin Firth. Colin Firth and the girl, and she was going to marry Colin Firth, but she fell in love with the fireman. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. That was called, I forgot. Keep that talking and I'll look it up. That fireman is so handsome. He should be a big star. What a he sexy is a guy. Star. Is he a big star? Yeah, he's a big TV star. He's a star of The Walking Dead. He's so sexy and handsome and sweet and gentle. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, that's his name. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Too many names. Should have been Jeff Dean. But anyway. Um, so we saw this movie, you guys, and it was called... Um, the accidental husband, right, it was cute. Came out in two thousand eight, and it it uh, has Colin Firth, Uma Thurman, and, and Jeffrey Uma. Dean Morgan. Uma never looked more beautiful than in this movie, and her and it's on Tubi, you guys. It's free to watch. And her legs, Uma's got the best legs in Hollywood. Long, perfectly shaped, and thin. She's about six foot tall, so she's a stunningly beautiful woman. I love Uma, Uma Thurman. I never miss any of her work. She's a, a joy to watch and, and a fun actress. I like love it. My so. nose is itchy. I want to blow my nose. I want to spit up phlegm. But I'm on television. You're not supposed to do that. Oh, it doesn't matter. No, I'm, I'm not going to blow <laughs> bubbles out of my nose. <laughs> Don't you hate a cold or a flu, whatever you call it, when you get it? You gave me the bad mic, you you muddy con. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. This was the mic. That, this is the mic that stops working. No, it isn't. You sissy fairy, you did so. Here, you can have this one. I don't care. Then maybe it's your mic that's cutting my <laughs> mic. You know, cheap El Cheapo. It's time we buy new equipment. All yeah, right? Boomer's right. Tubi's good. No, we have pl our equipment's fine. It's like everybody else. Our else's. equipment is not fine. It stinks. It's as old as your ass. And your ass no, is my old. ass is way older than the equipment. Well, your ass, well <laughs> just that your ass has been abused. It looks older. No, that's not true. Well, anyway, oh, be sending us hearts. B. Oh, I sent Eileen hearts too. Eileen, don't you agree with me? Who knows? I got to see now what's going that on. That Jimmy should have new equipment. Eileen Shapiro in New York, who I love. Eileen, give me kissing. Is is your little doggy with you? Oh, here comes mine. Astro heard kisses and he's jumping on my lap. Astro, say hello to Eileen. Say hello to what was her dog's name again? Felicia? No, what's the dog's name? Fiona. Fiona. Astro, meet Fiona. When you meet Fiona, you're going to fall in love with her and she's going to fall in love with you because you're a handsome black man. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're so cute. Anyway, 
We sound like retards, but what are you going to do? Where's our guest? Jim, hello. I'm working on it. Just keep talking. You well, see keep I'm talking. On. What am I, a fucking Victrola? Yes. A stereo? Not a Victrola. What do they call them today? Stereos? You know, the, the, the vinyl disc is back, which is ridiculous because it scratches and you hear imperfections. But why anybody wants to listen to good music on a vinyl disc on an old phonograph? Get out of here. What are we getting retro wacky? There we go. There's there somebody. Right. There's a man with a beard. I was just glass. trying to text Harlan and it bounced back just to make sure since I didn't have your contact info. But hello, hello. How are you? I'm great, guys. How are you? Um, I the, the internet was a little flashy. So if I freeze or something, I'll jump out and come back on. <laughs> okay. So tell me, Kevin, how do I correctly spell your uh, pronounce your last name? You correctly spell my last name, Spiritus. Uh, Spiritus. Harlan. No. Spiritus. Okay, so I did it pretty close earlier when I said oh, I don't know how to pronounce Shut his up name. and introduce me. All right, everybody. Now, uh, we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented actor, writer, director, producer, Kevin Spiritus. Hello and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> this is uh, First, I want to introduce you to my co-host, my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, who's also my husband, Ron Russell. Hi, Ron. Meanwhile, I think I'm in love. You're cute. What are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing Friday night? I'm going to a big party. Actually, um, he knows I, all those people. Probably know. Okay, stop. The cat. Are, are, are you Greek? You you must be. Your last name is Greek, so you're Greek. It's actually Lithuanian Russian. I'm not Greek. Oh well, so you can't get anything right, can you? No. But, <laughs> well, but back have, to the party. I have such a cold that you know, if I did see you, I wouldn't kiss you a lot because I wouldn't want to give you my cold. <laughs> So if I did tongue kiss, no. no, if I got to tongue kiss you, I would put a condom on my tongue so that <laughs> when I put my tongue in your mouth, the condom would protect you from getting my cold. It's called safe tongue. My mom, my mom and dad, just um, they just dropped off the uh, feed there. Anyway. <laughs> hey, Kevin's mom wait, and dad. Wait, your, parent, your parents are listening. <laughs> Probably. He's Probably. Probably. Well, I'm they have Jewish, to know that. I'm a boy from the Midwest. My parents are always listening. Come on, you know. Listen, I'm a stand-up comic who's a little insane, and I'm having fun with you because I know I your back. You I know your background, and I can't tell you how proud of you I am. So, Thank before you. we do any I of really that, am, though, we... because you know, when when family succeeds, I get happy. Thank you, Ron. Uh, which is actually terrific. So, first of all, we want to introduce. Uh, have you just say hi to the chat room? We have a chat room filled with people. We've got Germany. Okay. Uh, Canada, the United States, England, all over the place. So just say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, gang. There you the go. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun. So, um, Answer me. You got a boyfriend? Me? Yeah. No, I'm a single man right now. Oh, are you really? A cute guy, I just, a, I just a, assumed. A cute, a, cute, a, a cute guy like you, you should, you should get that you throw nets over you, the old queens. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, let, 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 let's just address this for one second because this is actually a very interesting question. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I really, I really want to like look at this because um, it's what the same question that inspired After Forever, the series. Okay, so uh, I'm a 59 year old man in July. I'll be 59, and I have had relationships in my life, and I've had great loves in my life, and sometimes I fall out of them or. We grow out of situations and relationships. And I was not involved with anybody when I ran into Michael Slade, my late collaborating writing partner. And he's, he said, why isn't someone like you in a relationship? And I said, I don't know. Have you eaten with me? You know, I, <laughs> I am. <laughs> well, wait, was that, have you eaten with me or have you eaten me? <laughs> it was with me, but anyway. <laughs> but I have to also say that the thing about relationships and the thing about wanting a relationship or assuming that we all should be in a relationship is I'm, I'm really good by myself. Like I love my solitude. I love my, my free time, my space. I love my schedule not to be selfish about it, but I am, I'm self caring in that way. And I, I can focus on my world. I also love the collaboration. I also love the intimacy and I also love the, the creativity that can come from finding. And I, bet, someone and I, else. and I, and I bet you. I'm, love not, I'm not opposed to it. I bet you love variety. Yeah, I do love variety, but it's also I, I just as I've gotten older, um, 
something that works so specifically and perfectly for one person may not be the perfect fit for myself. And then I've had to also grow myself outside of the guilt when someone has said, now, why aren't you in a relationship? Because it's not about me. It's about the other person's assumption of why someone like me might. No, 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 no. You you know, I just just wanted to bring it up. Now, wait a minute. If you were ugly, if you were ugly, fat and distorted and retarded, we would never say to you, how come you don't have a lover? Because we know nobody wants you because you're ugly, fat, distorted and gnarled and twisted and hideous. Jimmy, so, wait, wrong, a, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. When a guy comes on my show as cute as you, handsome, and not even cute, you are handsome, really handsome. And I'm sure if you're in a club or in a party, people are hitting on you right and left. You know, I'm handsome. You're handsome. We know what handsome is all about. I've been hit on all my fucking life. I'm I'm 81 years old and I'm still hit on in front of Jimmy. They hit on him all the time in front of me. They just toss me aside like a piece of trash. <laughs> oh, you know, honey, I mean, just... I, listen, I, I hear what you're saying. And I thank you. I think I think there's a backhanded compliment in there somewhere. Oh, uh, huge compliment. There is, there is a, the what compliment. I would say, hang on. Wait a minute. The compliment. Was, was, no, 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 no. Wait. What I was saying was, is that. The eye of the beholder, beautiful, not beautiful, ugly, not uh, whatever it is. You're right about that. It's it, it. Not one of us should have to fit a form and be assumed to fit a form. It may be a question like, oh, I'm surprised that someone with everything you've got going or everything you choose to be doing doesn't have a relationship. That That's curious. Let's talk about that. That's what I would say. Yeah, because you're a catch. Oh, well, thank you. Everyone's a catch if they want to be. Yeah. Come on. The chat room, the chat room listen, is all listen, talking listen. about how cute you are. I thought it was on fire here. I'm taking it off the wrong way. Okay. All, 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 all the women in the chat room are writing, oh, my God, they're yeah, so cute. Yeah, and he's got, a, he's got a sex. Not, my voice is not this way because I'm sick with a cold, but he's got a sexy voice. He could do we, voiceovers. We have B. Claudia from Germany. She's one of our biggest Look, he's even supporters. got nine. Are those teeth hey, yours? Wait, okay, wait, he's one of, she's one of our biggest supporters, <laughs> and she's like, I need the poster of his one-man show. Him so like perfect pose. I please need that sign. I mean, like they're all going crazy for you in the. <laughs> Look in, at in the, the teeth. I wonder if his boring. teeth are real. So I want to go back they're first real. of all. I want to go back first of all because you mentioned your show and we haven't talked about it yet. So I want to make sure people know what we're talking about. So you guys, okay. Kevin has a show. He not only uh, he wrote it, he stars in it. Uh, it's got five Emmy daytime Emmy awards. It's I wonder Africa. why. Six. Oh, six now. Okay, no congratulations. Uh, I thought well, I thought the sixth one maybe was nominated now, but they haven't announced who won or something is what I thought it was. Uh, we have two, two seasons of After Forever, um, season one and season two. Season one won five daytime Emmys um, and made history by becoming the first LGBTQ-themed drama to ever win five Emmys um, in a drama. And then season two, we won for best writing. And now... Because of COVID, we couldn't go into season three, which is written and ready to go. So we wrote a special called Riley's Unforgettable School Project. And oh, yes. that's, that's the special. That's the 37-minute documentary style special based on the characters of a series. And we're waiting to hear the nominations for that. So. Oh, and what you're going to get. So so you guys, it's called Adam Hooray Forever. for you. It's Good on, for you. It's on Amazon you. Prime. You can go on Amazon Prime and, and uh, watch it. And uh, basically, it's a... Uh, it's a it's it's a story about gays over forty. Uh, has to deal with relationships, dating, and loss. I didn't watch the whole season. I watched the first two episodes just because I didn't have time. Uh, but I wanted to watch some of it. The acting is phenomenal. Um, I love the fact that Mitchell Anderson is in it because, like, I loved him. I think he was in like Party of Five. Yes. Uh, and so I thought, yeah. and, I, and I and he's a phenomenal actor. And I also saw that Peter Kim is in it, which uh, I don't know if I saw him in the episode, but. Believe it, or, believe it or not, like Hackers is my absolute favorite movie of all time. <laughs> and he's in one of the guys in Hackers, which is so terrific. And it also has Anita Gillette, which I think you probably know. I know Anita for 50 years. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anita is an old New York friend of mine. It's It's got an incredible cast. Um, when Michael Slade, um, here, let me just catch you up to this so we'll be all in the after forever docket. My writing partner, Michael Slade, tapped me on the shoulder one day in 2014 and said, in New York and said, I think I used to write for you in Days of, your, Days of Our Lives. Is your name Kevin Spiritus? And that's the introduction that we had at the gym. And I said to him, yes, it is. And what are you doing? And are you still working on any of the soaps? And he said, uh, no, I'm not. And I said, well, I want, a new, I want to do a new show. 
I want to do a show about gay men over 30, you know, about love and, and, and dating. Cause I was single at the time. Here comes back to your question, Ron. And, um, <laughs> and, and, full circle. and he said, um, let's talk, let's talk. And the question that came up during several of our first coffees together was, um, why isn't someone like you in a relationship? And we talked about this and, and I, he didn't say, I know, I know, but that's why we talked about the very language of which it was asked. And I said to him, I said, I just haven't met the next right fit. And he that's said, I said to him, I said, what about you? And I knew nothing about him. And he said, um, I lost my partner about a year and a half, two years prior to meeting me. And I was so you know, sad by this news. And I said, how did it happen? And it was a very rare diagnosis of cancer, um, which gave his partner at the time three months to live. Oh, terrible, sad. And, and um, I said, do you still talk to him? And he looked at me for a moment and pondered what I was asking. And he said, yeah, I, I guess I do. This is two years after the death of his partner. Okay. And I, said, and I said, what would you think if you're comfortable with this about using that, that type of, uh, story point to create a situation why a character like Brian, the character I play, would be alone. And he's mourning the loss of his loved one, his great love. And so you could tell the story by flashbacks. You could tell the story in present time. And then you could also tell the story with Brian, my character, conjuring up Jason, having conversations with him to work through his healing. And that's how After Forever fell into place and that's how the stories are set up in each episode i, I like love it I well think it's you know I, i'm a great actor i made I, I still make many movies no seriously why don't you have an 81 year old man who's in a wonderful relationship come on and talk about that um i was in a 46 year relationship and he died of uh, pancreatic cancer yeah. and then I, and then i met jimmy um we've been together 10 years yeah love comes at any age if you yes, open, it does if you open up for it. Absolutely. If you, if you I mean, look at me, I'm 81. I'm, I'm crazy about this guy. Even though I flirt with you, I'm a little bit of a whore sometimes, but you know, I do it on the air, not in private. In private, I'm vanilla. You come on to me, I'll punch you in the face. <laughs> after, after I throw you down. It's just his television personality. <laughs> you know what? Five million people love me. What can I tell you, you know? I, I, I uh, don't discount the love. I don't discount the love. Uh, and then what I was going to say is you're absolutely right. Love happens anytime, anywhere. You At make any age. Yes. And there's no age on love. None. I mean, no. you could, you could go to the grocery store now and meet somebody and bam, it happens. And yeah. you don't know what happens. You go out of your mind. All you know is you want to be with that person 24 mm seven. -hmm. And that could happen to you still because you know, you're very handsome. So you get a lot of attention. Absolutely. Uh, now, 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 wait a minute. If and he's wear, open to it. And if you wear tight jeans and you're hung, you really will get a lot of attention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. So actually, too, though, I want to like brag for him a little bit. So you guys not only uh, so after forever is what he's he's become very well known for right now. It's got six daytime Emmys. Like I said, it's on Amazon Prime. B said she's already found it uh, on Amazon Prime. Um, and it has beautiful photos we on will watch Amazon it Prime. Tonight. So it's fantastic. Jimmy, so, Jimmy, Jimmy, let me just put one note. So in the conclusion of the After Forever, oh, arc now, or in the ongoingness of it. So season one, what, what, oh, season one had um, won the five Emmys. And just, just before we went to the Emmys that year, Michael Slade, my collaborating writing partner, was diagnosed with um prostate cancer and oh it was a God. very rare form of prostate cancer. so this is the whole art imitating life imitating art situation so michael through season two through the emmys through season two through writing and working and getting season two up and running um at the end of uh, december last year when we were not able to create season three which is already written and ready to go uh we decided to create um this one-off this special riley's unforgettable school project because it was all remote and um, is exactly the time when Michael's cancer came back. Awesome. So, sad to say that my dear writing partner and collaborator, Michael Slade, has left us to go coach us from the other side. And um, I wanted to acknowledge his beauty and his work and his talent and what he gave, gave me and what he's given the world through 
our creation. So that's what, that's, that's the arc. So we, we're going to do season three. We're going to go back in September. So I just want you to know we're going to have the completion. Good well, for you. Well, you're really winning, uh, I mean, awards. You're getting somewhere, and you're letting the world know about gay people, but not like gay people, you know, in leather, in alleys, blowing each other behind a garbage pail. But like so real many, gay people. Which so many movies portray gay people. Jimmy and I live in Palm Springs in a beautiful house, and we're very, very straight and narrow. We, we all like We husbands. do dinner parties. Yeah, we go I mean, to movies. It, it, we have three dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't we don't do three ways. We don't switch. We don't cheat. We have friends over. We watch television Monday nights. We play dominoes with my daughters. We live a very, I guess, a heterosexual life, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Not all gay people are stoned in drag, running around, getting screwed by any. I mean, you know, I, I watched the Halston uh, TV series, mm -hmm. and, and I thought it was a little much for straight people to watch, and I ain't I asked a lot of straight people, and they said, yes, it was a little bit much to watch when Halston was getting screwed by that black guy, and he was in pain and loving it. I don't think we have to show the world that part of us because it, it, it's not important. You know, we're, we're more than sex. Gay people are more than sex. We're creative. We're artists. We're actors and directors and hairdressers and lawyers and firemen. And <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're everything out there. And you know what? Sometimes it scares parents and they don't want their child to be that way, to be gay, because they're going to get the Halston picture in their mind. Oh, my God, some big black man's going to screw my kid. And that scares them. You know, you can't portray those pictures to the straight world. Yeah. Now, now that we all want to be equal, we all want to, we, we're, we're starting to say that everybody gets a shot at it. Let's gay people get a shot at it, too. And I love what you're doing, and I think it's brilliant. And as I said before, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I'm Michael, a gay act. I'm a gay activist, by the way. I love no. I thank you for that. And I and I think Michael's and my intention and and um, our want was to create a story about gay men over a certain age, which are always left off the canvas of storytelling. You've got yes. the young, well, you've got thirty-year-olds, and then you've got the you've got uh, Christopher Plummer, the old man down the hall with a cat. You know, you, where's the in between? And yes. the, show, the show is gay thematic in the sense that it's about two men in love. It's love, period. But it's a universal theme about loss because every single one of us will reluctantly or openly go through the 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 portal of loss, and it could be a partner, it could be a child, it could be a parent, teacher, animal. It, loss is inevitable and it's how we dance with it and it's how we make peace with it and for us that was that's why we didn't try and sell the show as a pilot we wanted to create the story that we created and i think i'm most proud of this work and i'm most proud of what we were able to do and accomplish and i think if we had turned it over to someone else you know the actors would have been re i'd be recast with john stamos or nothing against john stamos's you know work but i love him but it, all these things would have not fallen into the place that we knew that this was our our heart. Absolutely. Well, you're absolutely showing that gay men are not invisible. Yeah. And yes, we are invisible when we're over a certain age. Yeah. Young and we're in that age. Young, young people are, <laughs> when young people meet me, they are terrified. Because <laughs> no, because I'm 81 years old. And they say still alive. Because gay people don't want to age. They want to stay young and beautiful and thin forever. The minute they get older and they have wrinkles and they're not so pretty anymore, they're not the ones that get picked up in the bars or they're not ones that get compliments or anything. Mm -hmm. So and it's a hard it. life. It's, it's a vain life. It's a, a, a life of male vanity. I'm, I mean, I have no problem with it because I'm magnificent at 81. <laughs> <laughs> you know. you we all are. That's the that's that's the point. Yeah, I mean, I don't look old. I will never look old. I may be dead, but I'll never look old. <laughs> <laughs> and and the and the look of it is this: is that we we as a society age ourselves out of you know out of the um, popularity, out of out of right. the, um, and and it's it is it's very very focused in the gay world. I would think because of the the 
like you said, there's the young twink and then there's the older person and they don't want to be dealing with the old people. They don't want to have to look at that. But no. our culture doesn't want to have to look at age. So men, women, gay, straight, it's out there. And I think the whole idea is that if we can if we can claim that 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 Maya Angela quote, um, you know, we are more alike than we are unalike. We are all the same. You know? Let me t let me tell you a very interesting story. There was a gay bar in Hollywood called La Vie en Rose. Rock Hudson, I knew. I knew, Rock, I knew Rock Hudson for years. Rock Hudson would go to that club often. And one night I sat with him and we were talking and I said, you know, Rock, it's amazing that nobody is coming over to pick you up. I mean, he said, they don't. I'm old. I said, what do you mean you're old? You're Rock Hudson, the sexiest man on film. Rock Hudson, the sexiest man in the world. So he started to laugh. He said, Ron, that was, it ain't no more. And I thought to myself how sad that Rock Hudson was in a gay bar and none of the young guys, he only liked young, none of the young guys would go over to him. Yeah, it's a tragedy. It's a, it's a tragedy for everyone in the sense that, you know, youth is wasted on the young, you know. And yeah, sure abs it is. Absolutely, <laughs> youth is wasted Absolutely. On, it is. But I mean, now, I loved Rock as a person. I, mm -hmm. I met him when I worked on Macmillan and Wife years ago. I was on his show. And I loved him, but yeah. um, I would have gone to bed with Rock Hudson in a second, and I was considerably younger than he at that time. I mean, he was magnificent. Right. Even as an old man, he was gorgeous. If you were single. I didn't know you yet. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, you know how many years ago this love you? This is going back 25, 30 years ago. Or more. More, maybe. You know, I was, I was young. Rock was in his late 50s or early 60s. I like love it. No, but he was also, a, it was also a different time back then. I mean, I I came into this business uh, very closeted and very very worried and very nervous about you know being found out. It's not that I wasn't acting out or having relationships in my world in my life, but it was very small, and I I needed to expand my life. And until I could do that, I think the work was not even going to come to me. It was I'm closing off a part of myself. Therefore, you're closing off a part of the world and your business and your success. And I think Rock was probably, he is, one of the last great, you know, um, examples of, you know, don't talk about it. Don't admit to well, it. And he, it kind of crushed the world. Now I'm standing on his shoulders and other people's shoulders because I, once I came to the conclusion, if I can do a story like After Forever about my, about my spirit and my truth and what's personal to me, it freed me up. And had you told me I'd win an Emmy for playing opposite a leading man, you know, uh, telling that story about Mitchell and I being friends for years, he could, Mitchell came out early on in his career and it, it still quashed his career. So we're all, we're all rearranging and we're, we're restructuring this business in our lives. So I love it. Well, I think the, the other thing about Rock Hudson was he brought to light uh, AIDS. Yes. I Sad. mean, it, I and Elizabeth, Sadly, yes. and, and Elizabeth Taylor, who I knew for years because I worked for her with the Elizabeth Taylor Foundation for AIDS Research. I directed, produced, and was in drag shows throughout the country raising money for Ampha originally. Then we found out that the CEOs of Ampha were making 150000 right. a year. So Elizabeth took a powder and she opened up. Elizabeth Taylor Foundation for AIDS yeah. Research, which folks you could still give to, even yeah. though Elizabeth, Elizabeth is gone. I that, don't know if you can see this or not, but so Ron's best friend was Jane Russell. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Yeah. yeah. When he was younger, he impersonated Jane Russell and then he became her best friend later on in life. And so when he was younger, so that's Ron as Jane Russell. Wow. Uh, Wow. Yeah, and, uh, I, and he, I he only performed at, in straight clubs back only, in the day in the 60s I, and 70s. I, I did that show for about 20-something um, years. Wow. And then, of course, I got too old and I started to look more like Hermione Gingold in drag. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you stopped working. But I raised well over 150000 for AIDS. Not only my... I'm the founder, by the way, of Have a Heart. If you've ever heard of Have a Heart, yeah, I, yeah. I founded it and I used it for years and then I gave it away to people to take care of it. And they did. Um, I'm an activist. I was a stonewall. I fought for gay rights. I fought for, I mean, I remember when we couldn't go and drag because we'd be arrested as female, as, as 
whatever they call those. Degenerates. And I had to have a cabaret card in order to work. And the cabaret card said I was a man dressed as a woman. And that's humiliating that you have to show proof of who you are when you're working. We're artists. Yeah. And and the cops used to beat us up. A lot of times the cops, if you were pretty, they'd take you in the squad car and, you know, da-da-da, da-da-da, da-da-da. Or they would, if you were gay guys walking in the village, the cops would get you in an alley and say, give me your wallet. They take your money out and they'd let you go. So we went through a hell of a lot of crap. Black people are not the only ones that were beaten up and suffered or any other. We, we were just equal. That's why black people and gay people are brother and sister, because we all felt the same bullshit from society of the others. Yeah. So you've come a long way. Now the you've, fact you're that you you're standing show. on my shoulders. Yes, and I, I am. Thank and you. I hope that you portray what I just told you in some of your films. Show the world what the gay people had to go through. You know, more than Every six, opportunity. Absolutely. That, more that's, than, that's wait, exactly. wait, hang on, hang on. More than sixteen in the room was called a conspiracy, and you were arrested. Right. Okay, right. for being gay. I mean, it's sinful. What yeah. they did to her. You know how many kids I know committed suicide because they couldn't take the stress? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was it, a horrible it, time. It, it was, and it and it's now finally it's starting to maybe come out of that time. And I I'm Well, I'm you're gonna do it. You're doing it. And I you're, love you. You're for doing it and you're doing you're it. You're absolutely way. doing it. You're totally fabulous. And we're gonna, totally gonna I'm work. going to push your show like crazy. And I'm uh and I'm uh I no, am I will. we're, we're gonna you watch know, it. We have right now there's over five million no, people. not right now over the we uh, over, over the, the show over the what, every sh our shows average five million plays five so. million plays so i'm appealing to the five million people the world throughout please watch this show our, educate our chat room learn learn educate help gay people uh help gay people become free from any of the hang-ups that they were taught by the straight people by the straight world <laughs> and <laughs> For those 5 million who are listening at any one given time, um, we're on Amazon in the USA and the UK only at this time. So if those if those people who get their eyeballs on it there in these two continents, tell your friends so we can get a distributor and take it worldwide. Absolutely. You should. We have a lot of people in the chat room from England, Australia right now that England, are watching. But, not, but he said England, not Australia. No, no, I said yeah. England yeah. and Australia. Yes. They'll get. They'll find us, though. They'll find us. Yeah, they'll find it. So well, okay. So I. So I want to. I want to because we, we've got like fifteen minutes, and I want to like talk about some other stuff to go with this. So everybody, watch After Forever. It's fabulous. We, I'm watching it tonight. We, and I um, can't wait. Um, some of the th other things you guys have seen Kevin on, if you like soap operas, which we're, we're friends with, like all this. We always call them soapies. Like Sean mm -hmm. Cannon's coming on next, and I know Studio City is one of your like uh, competitors, and he's a really good friend. He, he uh, of ours, but uh, and Ron he, Moss. And, yeah, and uh, um, Kevin, Kane, 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 uh, uh, Sean, Sean Kanan. Uh, I give him an incredible amount of credit, and he's it's not competition in the sense that it's a, if he did a series, I did, you a, did series. a series, right? Uh, that's that's if you're gonna call that competition, I think Sean did an incredible job. He pulled together an incredible group and he gave great homage to the world of self opera. So I'm very proud, absolutely. Of him. Yes, let me, let me tell you something about Sean Kanan. Yeah. I, I just had open heart surgery a couple of weeks ago and I'm still recuperating and I'm in a movie. I wrote a movie that Lainey Kazan and I are going to be in called oh. The Gift of Magic. And we wanted to have a meeting. So I said to Sean and Michelle to come over because Michelle's going to direct it and Sean is going to be one of the producers. Guess what? They cooked an entire Italian meal, mozzarella, everything, and brought it to me so I didn't have to cook. Yeah. Now, I mean, how many people have Sean Kane and cooked for them? I mean, give me a break. You know, he's, <laughs> he's all heart. I haven't. So you're, Wait, you're, you're, you're running above he, me there. Uh, he's all heart. Yeah. His, his wife, I adore Michelle. I love her to pieces. Um, they're, they're, and you're right. It's not competition. You guys have done two no, different shows, and you not. both have achieved something yeah. wonderful. And I mean, we know. I told him. I asked him if we both put, we put, in, our we put in our dues, and that's that's where I think um, that's where I think the success comes in because Sean has stayed in this business, and you know I've stayed in this business, and it our successes don't necessarily happen in a straight line, or you don't connect all the dots, and so you right. stand, step back and look at the pattern and. 
Uh, no, absolutely. Tristan Rogers is our good friend. Judith yeah. Chapman is our good friend. Uh, Judith. And Mike and Matt Michael Damien. I mean, we know everybody in the biz and their friends. And now, you know me. And now we know you. That's yeah. right. Wait a minute. They're not just acquaintances. We see them socially. We have dinner parties. We sell, you know, we we see them a lot. Uh, they are the best people in the world, and nobody's. I mean, when Tristan got the uh, Emmy, everybody was happy for him. There was no jealousy. It's bullshit. So no. yeah, now you're now you're our new friend. Yes, that's right. We'll put you on. Where our do you live? Where do you live? I Where live right live? next door, but I haven't been talking to you all these weeks. No, if you, um, I live in Los Angeles in Hollywood. <laughs> okay, you so you're in Hollywood. So we're gonna invite you to some I, premieres I, and some things. Yeah. Well, I, I'm I in a movie. I'm in a movie, The 26. <laughs> We're having a red carpet premiere. It's in L.A. A, Everything's in L.A. And we have an to after, go to LA. after hour party. So if you want to come and see my Academy Award I, I will, performance. I will, say this, I will say this right now because I'm now sad that I'm not going to. I'm going to be in New York for the next two weeks scouting location for season three. Oh, so good for you. That's good, <laughs> though. You can give me a private screening in your home when I come down and see the show. Uh, I wouldn't have that. So, I wouldn't have that film in my house. So we have to. We have to. Uh, it's going to be a bad film, but it's going to be a lot of no, fun. No, don't say it's going to be a bad film. It's going to be an a interesting film, film that kids. It's called Clown Motel Two. It's about <laughs> killer clowns. Hang on, we have other things though. Anyway, we go. it's a good movie. Kids will enjoy it. Yeah, Jimmy's trying Sorry. to move it along. Okay, give Jimmy the reins. One, there you go. one reason. One reason I'm trying to move it along is because uh, because Ron is in a lot of horror movies, and and I'm friends with a lot of horror yeah. movie stars. Um, and you have been in some major horror movies. We have to talk about horror movies. We have a girl, a lady, Don Hinton, and just jo joined us in the chat room, and she's like, "I hope I didn't miss the horror movie, you know, chat." Yeah. So. So first of all, you played Nicholas Rogers in Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven. Uh, Kane Hodder's a really good friend of mine. Uh, Wait, my last name is Rogers. I didn't even know I had a last name. That's hysterical. Okay. Oh, that's okay. So you're Nicholas in Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven, which unfortunately probably isn't really one of your better Friday the Thirteenth. But I, I noticed on your resume that you do have uh, you have quite a few horror movies because you're also in The Hills Have Eyes too. I'm friends with Michael Berryman, and and those oh, movies were awesome. Uh, yeah, you know, for people. Time. Yeah. <laughs> so do you do you, you kind of like the horror genre? Yeah, I mean, I I think there are there are blood and guts horror genre, and then there's yes. suspense horror genre. I think Friday the Thirteenth was one that created you know that brand of like no reason to kill, just kill. You know. Yeah. So, um, and <laughs> I hate also, those. I hate those. I'm I'm I like to be in thrillers. I, yeah. if, if it's a thriller movie, I'm all set for it. I'm in a movie called The, the Big Friggin' Rat, where I'm devoured by this enormous Volkswagen-sized rat. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, he yeah. doesn't like those. He well, likes no, you know what? You know what? It's work. And I'd oh, rather go to work sense. than sit home playing with myself. All right. Well, working is, is learning and, and learning is the, you know, um, I love the crew. I love the co-stars. They're all kids. Yeah. They're all 30 years old. Make me my feel first movie was my first movie was The Hills Have Eyes Part Two with, with yeah. my and it was Wes Craven. I mean, I got my first job my first year here, and I went and I started to learn about the sets and, and film, because film is different than stage where I started. And right. Uh, and then another movie comes along. And, and if you become the king of slasher film sequels like myself, uh, you know, there's, you don't know why you're going to do these movies all the time. I'm not embarrassed about the work. I was cutting my teeth. And I feel that um, there are great relationships that I've created from those. Um, Absolutely. Those and, and they've taken me, you know, I love to watch how the fans come to sit and talk to me at conventions. And like, we loved you in this movie. And oh my God, wasn't it scary? I, they're so moved by it. You're doing a service on a level that you don't even know you're doing. It's not about, was it my best work? Or, oh, yeah. I take it. I go back and do another slasher film in a minute. So also, you guys, wait, you wait, can see him. Hang on. Wait, hang on. People say to me, why do you do those films? You know, I say, why? Because if two people enjoy what I do in those films, I'm happy. It was an accomplishment. And there are more than two people because. Our, you know, they go to Target. Those damn things sell like crazy. Walmart. Walmart. I went looking for one and they were sold out in an hour. So, you know, there's a million people that really enjoy those cheesy films. And I'm happy that I'm in them because you and I, we're making ha people happy. That's what we intend to do as actors. I don't you agree? I don't, I don't think so, there's okay, ever so a shitty talk, performance. Or, <laughs> shut up before I put this microphone right up your ass. 
<laughs> so you guys, some of the films you can see them. Okay, so you got Friday the 13th, Part 7, The Hills Have Eyes, Part 2, Albino Farm, Bloodstone, uh, Subspecies 2, Bloodlust, Subspecies 3. That's funny. He also has like a little role in At Pupil, which that was a major film with Ian McKellen and Brad Renfro and Jock Stewart Jackson. Uh, if you like soap operas, besides After Forever, which has got six daytime Emmy Awards, um, he was on Days of Our Lives for a very long time, One Life to Live, uh, Valley of the Dolls when they did the remake in 1994 with Sally Kirkland, who's a friend of Ron's. Yep. Good rituals, stuff. which I don't know what rituals. I don't remember rituals, but it's eighty nine episodes, so it wasn't on a little bit of time. <laughs> rituals was the first syndicated uh, soap opera that was moving across daytime and nighttime, and it was ah, a day. Okay. It like, yeah, um, it, it we didn't have um, we didn't have syndicate ch channels set up the way they are now. Like had had rituals happened maybe in nineteen ninety one. It would have probably been as big as a days of our lives or such, but um, we didn't have that yet. You know, okay. now we got the internet, so everything. Right, that's you can right. Put anything out there. You can put anything up there. You guys have also seen him on Quantum Leap, The Facts of Life, Married with mm -hmm. Children, Friends, VIP wow. with uh, what's her name? And Pamela Anderson, Pamela. right? That, that was Pamela Anderson. Silk Stockings. Um, so he's had all kinds of wonderful things. Do you, do you, if you had a bucket list, let's say you had a bucket list and, and you've already worked with, I didn't mention all the actors you've worked with who are in all these different things, but let's say you had a bucket list and you were allowed to pick a male and a female actor that you haven't had an opportunity to work mm -hmm. with yet. Who are two people that you think would be really fun to work with? And the other question I like to ask actors, uh, if you could have ever been in any film that's ever been made in history, what film would you have liked to have been in? <laughs> now I could have done my homework for you. I gotta go through my mental what movie. Uh, I'll just pick Singing in the Rain. Okay, because, you know who doesn't who doesn't like to sing in the rain after falling in love and um and and singing to uh, uh, Debbie Reynolds. I mean, I just grew up on movie musicals, and um I don't know. I I think um oh actors um I I, I would like I would love to work opposite Meryl Streep. I mean, I uh, just everybody. A lot of people say yeah, that. I, okay. I, I don't know I, why that is. I, I, I would. Well, why is it? Because she's a fucking phenomenal force, and and. But there are so many other I, actresses that are phenomenal. Wait, forces. wait, stop, stop, stop! I said you gave me this this question, and I my mind is flooding. I could sit there and go, no, I don't know. I there's I, I want to work with everybody. I've worked with Hugh Jackman. I've worked with with um, uh, Sir, Sir Ian McKellen. There's a million actors. I haven't worked with oh, Harold. So Hugh, here's my answer. Hugh, Hugh Jackman <laughs> is freaking awesome. So you did uh, – I think I read – so Michael Musto is a friend of ours, and I read an interview he did with you, um, which I don't know if that's where I saw the Hugh Jackman thing. But uh, So you were like his understudy on Broadway, right, for something? Uh, I was his standby, which means I was never on the stage while the show was going on. So in case he were to – not be uh, in case okay. his absence, I would step on. He never missed a show, but um, he's they he's never quite do. A they never do. Quite a wonderful talent. He is very um, very supportive, and I feel that he did not have to create the communication or the relationship with me as a standby and someone who is waiting. And I wasn't waiting the wings. I was hired to be his standby. <laughs> and uh, what that means is, uh, during the show. And I support the show, and I, I do what I'm supposed to do. It has, however, created such an incredible uh, support from him. He's he loves After Forever. He's watched all the series. He's uh, been very very supportive of it, and um, so I'm, I'm grateful to know you. Uh, that's very very cool. So maybe so you, he'll come on the show now. You has he on your have, have, have you invited him on your show? Um, I I have. We we're trying to find the right thing. There good, you go. Good for you. Be a big, big you so know, you rating for you because he's a very good, you know, singer and dancer and everything. So, and you worked on Broadway. So does that mean you also sing and dance? I sure do. Actually, I'll be down with that voice. Of course, I'll be in uh, Palm Springs at the One Night Only concert this year in November, November eleventh. I don't know the dates. I didn't have that ready in front of me. But um, last year the uh, the benefit was canceled, of course, due to COVID, and this year they're re. Mounting the one night only a show at the McCallum, awesome. which is Mr. Michael Childers' event. Right. Oh, and in the chat room, too, they're writing that you were the winner of the Glad Media Award in 2021 for special recognition for After Forever. Like, they're like, everybody's yeah. researching you as we're talking. <laughs> 
congratulations on that though. So I'm so happy yeah. that you're getting so much recognition for uh, something that, that you create something that you created you know what is so wonderful about what he's doing is i'm going back 40 50 60 years ago when we used to talk about things like this i remember sitting with uh, with not, not marlon brando maybe one of the one of those big stars years ago at the improv and they were saying do you think we'll ever be on television as gay hmm. and you know it was like Forget about it. What are you out of your fucking mind? Never. They could put fags on television. Never, never, never. And we really resented it, you know, because Marlon was gay. And a lot of the uh, performers I grew up with were gay. Um, gay women as well as gay men. And they had to hide it. And we all used to talk among each other and say, wouldn't it be nice if we could play a gay character? And now you've brought it to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love it. No, it took how many friggin' years? So yes, maybe it has. 60, 70 years to get it. Yeah, we're, I mean, it's, it's an evolution. And I think, um, like I mentioned, you know, had I, had you asked me, uh, had you asked me as a teenager, had you asked me as a young adult in this business in Hollywood uh, at 21, at 30, at 42, had you asked me, would you be, if you would have told me, I would be winning awards and 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 i'd and, never and believe you i'd never believe you. i would have, i would have said i, I, would, I, would, I, I would, would have said i would have said stop the drugs you're out of your friggin' mind never gonna happen <laughs> yeah, yeah you know but then when they started doing gays we were always in drag murdering people or we were perverts and leather in alleys killing people and they only made us victims and they punished us in every movie because we were gay so we really didn't like that portrayal of gay people we wanted to be just what you're doing and and i don't know how you tell me how this came about i mean how'd you have the balls to do this you know I, just like my i said to michael i said i'm ready i'm ready to tell stories uh that are important to myself and himself and they weren't writing roles with my name on i didn't see them coming down the pike in any way so i just thought if i don't stay creative i don't put content out there knowing that we are now able to do our own content. I mean, if you've got a cell phone, you can make a movie. But I yes. just, I saw something I wanted to do and, I, and I, I wanted to make a space for it. And I, I didn't do it alone. I mean, Michael and I really collaborated. We've thought about what each, each scene, each uh, scenario, each season would be about. This season um, three coming up is actually the, is probably the final trilogy of our short form, um, you know, these things. if someone wants to pick a show and, and base another story off of that to create with that, but we had set out to do the arc of three seasons and it's about honoring your truth, honoring your, your heart and your spirit. And if it's personal to you, and I know this for, as an actor, when I'm involved in a role, the character is going through some sort of healing, some sort of evolution. And those roles that I usually take on, even like the Friday the 13th movies, there's something about Nick that I had to work out as Kevin, right? Because I'm yes. playing the yes. part. How can I not? So, um, and I think if you're seeing the part being worked through, if you're seeing the emotional, you know, um, evolution of this character, you're going to be touched, hopefully. So if I'm healing, hopefully you're healing. And that's kind of how After Forever was really... You know, put it well, I love it's, it. it's like it's connecting, you know, you have to do that. You have to connect yourself with the part, with the character and then portray it and make it sell. It's a difficult yeah. thing. We all do that. I mean, when we get a, a script, we see the character we are. We analyze it. We read it. We think about it. And I say to myself, if I met this guy in a subway and I spoke to him, I wonder what he's like. And he and the character just comes to life. So and actually, it's Ter Teresa from South Florida said you shattered the glass ceiling. Um, they all like love you. We have a lot of gay people in our audience, by the way. Uh, and somehow, Beeson lives in Germany, but she says she can get the series in Germany somehow. I don't know exactly good, how. Good, good. But she love, said she's going to get it. Mark, so, no. However, she wants to get it, I say get it and spread it around. So. Absolutely. Right. So we'll, Schnell, spread, Schnell. we'll spread it all around. So listen up, you guys. You can follow Kevin. He's on um, Twitter and Instagram. He's at, uh, at Kevin Spiritas. So it's S-P-I-R-T-A-S. So it's K-E-V-I-N-S-P-I-R-T-A-S. 
Uh, follow him Instagram and Twitter. He doesn't really tweet that much. I think he's on Instagram no, more. I'm, I'm more on Facebook. And I'm actually more on Instagram. And and you can always follow me, um, you know, on my website afterforevertheseries.com. There you go. Afterforevertheseries.com, you guys. Um, we want to uh, thank you for coming on the show. Wish you all the luck with it. You've been a great guest. Um, love what you're actually doing. Also, and, love and, that and you I made a bunch of horror movies. And I want to thank you for taking my torch and running with it. Because I'm tired. <laughs> thank you. No, I'm honored. I'm honored. I, I'm, you and, I'm tired, you Kevin. Me. I'm tired. Do I? I've been, I, I've been fighting for gay rights all my life. Now you do it. Take it over. Okay, I will. He's Makes doing a great job already. I can, You're doing I can a die a happy job. guy one day. I can say, okay, we got somewhere. We got somebody like you and a few other people out there who are doing things to make us look good and and normal and, and you know, Americans, just people. So, Kevin, do me a favor. Say hi, say hi to Pat. Say hi to Cindy. Say hi to B and say hi to Teresa because they're all, like, loving you. So, Pat, Cindy, Teresa... Who do I say? MB. Oh, God. Uh, Pat, Teresa, and, and one more whose name was said very quickly. Hello to all B, 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 Claudia. Yeah. Now, you know who oh, you B. look like? B, yes. I've been trying to figure out who you look like. And there are times that you look like Marcello Mastriani. Have you ever been told that? I have been told that. Yes. You look like My Marcello Mastriani, and that's not yeah. shit. <laughs> no, that's no, good. No. Uh, my my late teacher Milton Gonzalez uh, was he'd say that all the time. Yeah, I see I Marcello. It. You know who Marcello Mastiani yeah. is? He's in all the Sofia Loren movies, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So Kevin, thank you so much for coming on. We want to thank Harlan Bull for setting this whole Thanks thing up. Congratulations, oh, Har Harlan! And everybody, watch After Forever. It's gonna it's Wait a, a fabulous second. show. Harlan, if you're on this right now and you're listening, I need to talk to you. Okay, I want to put together a show with Tippy and a bunch of your people <laughs> talking about Hollywood, the golden years. I can't get to Harlan. I don't know why. No, I can. I got his phone number. Well, give me his phone number. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Kevin, thank you so much. Good luck. Congratulations for everything. Uh, great, great scouting on season three. And uh, we hope to see you in Hollywood soon. You betcha. You. In, per in person, because I want to shake your hand. Okay. All righty. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Stay I bet healthy. you do. Stay happy. All right. Keep, keep, keep up the good work. Everybody loved him. Well, he's doing a wonderful thing for a, a great group of people. I mean, we've always been uh, portrayed as crap and junk. There he is, the man of man. What's hey, up? Man man, hey, man Sean, man. how you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. We're just talking to my buddy Kevin, huh? Yeah, he oh, spoke we, very highly yeah, of you. He did. I don't. I don't know why, but he did. <laughs> Meanwhile, we haven't seen you in years. You don't like <laughs> us anymore. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Before before uh, Sean before Sean uh, comes on, let's make a real introduction for him. So, hey, everybody! Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented superstar Sean Kanan. Hello, and welcome to the show. That was a pretty good intro, Jimmy. How are you guys doing? We're good. How are we're you? We're doing good. Good. We had a good time with oh. Kevin, and now we're going to have a good time with you. Before we, I'm not going to have to introduce Ron. You've been on enough times. So I don't have to do it. But oh, we have a on. chat room we're, filled we're with good people. Friend. Meanwhile, wait, 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 we have a chat room full of people. So say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hey, everyone. I don't know who you are, but hi. Well, you got to definitely say hi to Cindy Lady Lake because she's like, oh my gosh, Sean Kanan's coming oh, on. I'm so excited. <laughs> She'll like love it and say hi to B Claudia too. She's in Germany. She like loves everything. I told uh, uh, all uh, I, hi, Claudia. Good I, I, to, I told all the women to make sure they have fresh batteries in their vibrators because you know Sean Kanan's coming on. And I got a lot of response. Yeah, I just changed them. But anyway, I love your wife, Michelle. I'm gonna kidnap her. I think she's a keeper. She oh, she's is, such a keeper. It's she not even is funny. so incredibly smart. I never yes. knew that. No. I but never you, knew she was brilliant. I knew yeah, she was beautiful. Right, right. Here's, here's, here's the scary thing. In relationships I had prior to Michelle, I used to think I was the brains of the operation. How frightening is that? So, I mean, Michelle is – I'll tell you a quick story. So, one day I came home. This was years ago. And I, I see all over the dining room table are giant computer parts and the shell of a computer. And I said, what the hell are you doing? 
And she said, I'm building a computer. And I mean, what do you mean you're building a computer? I didn't know it until she told me she's she's certified to build computers. I mean, the stuff that woman <laughs> knows how to do, it, 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 you know, it's a good it's a good thing I found her. Amazing. And you're a beautiful couple. I always tell people that the love is so fresh and, and lasting and wonderful uh, in a world of where people don't love long sometimes. But I have this friggin' head cold, Sean. I can't get rid of it. No. I still have it. I had it when you came over the other night, the other day. So hold on, you guys. Anyway, everybody out there, I told the other fellow the story how Sean and Michelle cooked for me because they didn't want me, uh, you know, broken to cook, which I don't have the energy to cook. No. And they cooked for us. And it was wonderful. And everybody's flipping out all over the world saying, my God, what a good friend. My cousin's in Italy. Love and adore Sean because they remember him from some television show years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dancing and, with the Stars in Italy, no, right? No, Weren't no, you no, dancing? No, no, Are they watching? Some, uh, yeah, my my cousin Lelia is out of her mind. That oh, you know. That in my my I don't know if they watch the show, but my cousin Lelia, who is my age, she loves you. Anyway, so um, hold on, let's go. Uh, so everybody, this is Sean Kanan. Anybody who doesn't know him, I want to do a quick little bragging thing. First of all, you can follow him on Twitter at Sean Kanan. It's S E A N K A N A N. His Instagram is is Sean dot mm -hmm. um, So they're not the same. You got to like check it. Um, he's uh, was Mike Barnes in the Karate Kid three. He's a phenomenal actor. You've seen him as Deacon Sharp on both The Bold and the Beautiful and The Young and the Restless. He did a couple episodes of The Bay. He was A.J. Quartermain on General Hospital. He was on Sunset Beach. Uh, I didn't know that you were on an episode of The Nanny because that's like Ron's favorite show yeah, from back I, in the day. I the Nanny and I worked with her on Happily Divorced. I'd like to see The Nanny episode. What number was it? Do you know? Do you remember? Oh, God, I don't remember. What? When you could find it, give me the episode number. Yeah. He was also. Oh, no, you he was, all you got to do is go to IMDb and you'll see it. It'll give you all the information. Yeah, we'll have to look it up. He was also on two in two Perry Mason TV movies, you guys, and now he plays. Well, you guys are going way deep into my my acting past. I know. I didn't realize this, so I actually I never really like looked at all that stuff up, and so I'm looking it up now. So then, you guys, uh, now he's on the how many? Okay, how many? He's on Studio City, you guys. Not only did he write it. Uh, he stars as Sam Stevens, who plays Dr. Pierce Hartley uh, in a soap opera. So it's like life imitating wait a minute, life. Wait a minute. Did you write that with Michelle or did Michelle write it? A whole bunch of people wrote it. Michelle, Michelle, and, Michelle and I wrote, wrote it together along with, along with Lauren de Normandy. And, okay, uh, okay, 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 yeah, okay. This, this I wanted to, because I know you produced it. You produced it, Michelle, and you wrote it. Okay. And he's and he's and he stars in it as Sam Stevens. So first of all, you guys, wait, wait, wait. And soon next year, you could see him playing my son in our movie <laughs> called the, right. the, Gift the Gift of, of Magic. Magic. So hang on, starring Lainey Kazan and yours truly. So you guys, Studio City, it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, in 2020, it got seven um, seven Emmy nominations, eight. one win, eight, eight. Oh, that oh that just you got to fix that shit on IMDb. Oh, okay. damn that. So eight Emmy nominations. Um, uh, Tristan Rogers won for Outstanding Performance. Uh, it got uh, 11 nominations in the Indie Series Award. It won Best Actor and Best Supporting Actress for Carolyn Hennessy and Patrika Darbo and Best Writing. Uh, now 2021 nominations are out. It's nominated for Daytime Emmy Outstanding Limited Drama Series. And it is freaking awesome, you guys. It's on Amazon Prime. So we watched all of it two nights ago. The rest and of I got to tell you... The the you and Ron Moss thing was adorable. It was it funny. Yeah. I yep. mean, the way the way he stayed. And he shoots a bird. It was no hilarious. wait. The way he stayed deadpan faced. He never moved a muscle. No, he just who knew Ron stood was there funny. like a statue. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I it was good. Ron Moss was funny. It was very good. I enjoyed it. And yeah. you guys know Ron Moss because he was on our show last week. And with his lovely uh, wife, with Devin. Devin DeVasquez. And he's also in Player, Baby Come Back. So right. so tell us what's going on now. Oh, that's what I liked. I liked your line when you said to him, yeah, baby, back. Yeah. Baby, 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 come baby, back. Baby, come back. I cracked up when I heard that. That was clever. But yeah, baby, um, come back. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. In the chat room, they're asking where to see it. So you guys, uh, Studio Amazon. City, it was on Amazon yeah. Prime, you guys. And you can see it. It's a fabulous show. It's a lot, a lot of fun. And um, Fun, fast moving. 
Yes, very fast moving. And I, I just number one, congratulations on all the things you got. We're going to talk about your books, too. But I wanted to like let's let's go over Studio City a little bit since Emmy time is now. And, well, I want uh, to say something that Sean corrected me on. When we were talking and I said something about soap opera, Sean said, I'm more than a soap opera actor. I'm also a movie actor. And I want to make that point. Sean Kanan is a movie star oh, and stop. a television. Shut up. The fuck are you? I might get another meal this week. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's a movie star and a television personality. So there you go. Actually, hold on. He's a movie star. So here's two we movies. Love, we love you, Sean. You guys, here's a movie he did in 2019. Beyond the Law with Johnny Messner, Steven Seagal, Zach Ward, who's been on our show, Bill Cobbs, and, and unfortunately, the late DMX. Um yeah. He just did a movie, Killing Field, with Bruce Willis, Chad Michael Murray, Sarah Romer, Donna Dierico, Christos Andrews, and Zach Ward, and they've been on the show. And so he is a movie star, and he he just know. And, and and let's face it, the Karate Kid three, like Karate Kid shit, is the hottest thing on the fucking planet right now. Anything you know, Karate Kid, and he was Mike Barnes, who was like the total like, you know, badass. <laughs> and he cannot he cannot commit yet about Cobra Kai. What is it called? <laughs> What is that shit called? It's called Cobra Kai. Cobra, oh, he can't yeah. commit. But, but I think that maybe he's going to definitely be in Cobra Kai. They'd be out of their minds if they didn't put him in because he's such an important part of the history of Cobra Kai. Not that karate I ever watched. I never watched the movie because I hate those karate movies. <laughs> but I will watch it when Sean's in it out of respect to his art. So here's the other thing people, a lot of people might not know about the Karate Kid 3 and Mike Barnes is that Sean Cannon actually is like a freaking karate person. Like he's like not oh, like, yeah. he's not an actor playing like he oh, knows yeah. karate. He's oh, a karate yeah. guy who became an okay, actor. Okay, okay. We are in a little cabaret sort of a tavern and my daughter Deirdre is with us. And Deirdre is like six foot high when she's in high heels. And Deirdre had her hair pulled back in a bun and no makeup. When she went to the ladies' room, a couple of guys got nasty and they called her a man or something. She was a lesbian. I don't know what it was. And Deirdre turned around and let them have it. Well, Sean Kanan got up. He jumped into karate kill position. <laughs> oh. And he said, and he said, come All on. All he did was defend wait, her. Wait, he said, come on, come on. You're talking about my friend. Apologize. And the guys got so scared. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was sexy. You know, and Michelle and I smiled. I said, "Is it always like that?" She said, "Always." <laughs> you you got to like we love enjoy. It. I Meanwhile, I think I wait. Italian. I've got that Italian hot blood in me. No, my daughter Deirdre loves and adores you for that, and she always tells you know us when we talk. No, she said he stuck up for me, and that was so sweet. Stop it. Look Actually, they're all saying in the chat room, very impressive. So let's talk a little bit about your karate background a little bit, because like, so you were a karate guy before you actually auditioned for, for so Karate I, Kid back then? I talk about this a lot in my book, Way the Cobra. You know, I was, uh, uh, I grew up in Western Pennsylvania and um, I was a, I was an undisciplined kid. I, I wasn't like criminally wild, but I was wild. And when I was about 14 years old, uh, I stepped foot into uh, a Japanese karate do dojo and it gave me a lot of things that I was lacking. I mean, it really taught me uh, discipline and humility and, uh, and a lot of things that you might not really associate with uh, martial arts, but are a part of it, which is compassion. And um, it really had a profound effect on my life. I'd studied uh, karate for probably three and a half, four years before I did Karate Kid 3. And then I trained with Pat Johnson, who, uh, Pat Johnson's, a, I believe, a ninth degree black belt in uh, Tang Soo Do. Uh, I've trained in some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and uh, American kickboxing. And, you know, martial arts has always been something that's really um, been an important part of my life. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I recommend it to anybody uh, and especially for kids. It's a, it's a wonderful way for kids to gain self-confidence. And, uh, you know, bullying has become such a such a pandemic. Yes. Uh, you know, and especially with cyberbullying too. You know, bullying has gone to a, a completely different level now with kids yes. getting bullied. And, and unfortunately, suicide is the fourth leading cause of death among adolescents, and bullying is a huge contributor to it. And I feel that you know, studying martial arts is is not about learning to fight, although you you know you learn to do that, but it's learning to exude confidence and get in touch with who you are and kind of bring out the best of who you are and express yourself. 
And you've continued, though, to do this even since then, because like I, I if every guys, if you guys follow his Instagram, you see him like tr- working out with like the. It's really the, funny. Well, I, I agree with self defense. When I was a kid, I learned to go up on the top of a roof with a brick, and when somebody <laughs> I didn't like walked by, I would target and hit them in the head with the brick. So that wow. took talent. So it was it was easier than karate. <laughs> yeah. Karate, you have to learn so much. My way is get a brick, go on the roof, drop it on them, <laughs> and that's it. Brick-tay. Yes. Yes, Brick-tay. <laughs> it's called Barat Brick-tay. No, so listen, if you guys follow Sean on his Instagram, it's Sean.Cannon. You see, like, he's been doing all kinds of training on there a couple and of I months ago. I training again because yesterday I just booked a film, and it's uh, uh, an MMA storyline, and I play an ex-MMA fighter who uh, has to train his brother for a fight to uh, square away a, a gambling debt, or they're going to kill his family. And so... Uh, uh, it looks like I'm I'm right back into it. I love that. So Sean, Sean shows me a picture of his uh, of him with his forearm like this, and I said, "That's CGI, right?" He said, "No, that's my arm." I said, well, "You don't have an arm that big," and then he flexed it for me. He's got some big muscular it's arm. Really good lighting, though. I had like really the, good uh, look, wait, look at my muscle. Time. See my muscle. Not <laughs> bad. So wait, so so wait. I have a question. Like, so do you like the the like? I love the fighting movies, but I watch them when he's not around. But like, the best of the best is like one of my all time favorite movies. I watch it every year. Uh, You know, I grew. Listen, I grew up, and for me, going to movies, um, and I would go by myself, was a form of escapism. And I think when you grow up in a small town, you tend to look beyond your immediate vista to the larger world. And and you know. Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon and, and Clint Eastwood in The Outlaw Josie Wales and Alec Guinness's Obi-Wan Kenobi were like my earliest mentors. And they also were what spurred my desire to get into acting. But Bruce Lee, when I was a kid, was, you know, he was so amazing because he was, um, I don't know if transracial is the right word, but it wasn't like you're watching a movie about an Asian guy. He was this guy that was a force of nature who happened to be Asian. And uh, he was, you know, people forget what an enormous star he was. And so martial arts films have had a profound impact on me for, for a very long time. So what no, are some wait, of your favorite ones? Wait, what I, are I some wanna, of your, wait, I, I want to interject something extremely important, which he could be, he, people, he could misconstrue something. When he said movies was escapism, it was not from his mom and dad because I know them and no, they're wonderful. No. They're wonderful people. So don't think he was escaping no, from the family. Him. No, I want to clarify that because people might think he hated his family no, and he was running yeah. away. I mean, you have a wonderful mother and father. I like them so much. You know, it's funny. Even to this day, you know, um, um, I love going to the movies by myself. There's something about, um, you know, sitting in the dark and looking at that amazing 30 foot screen which i find uh transfixing and from the time i was really young i found it um mesmerizing and i think that's a lot of the reason why eventually i got into being an actor you know i I saw it as such a a powerful medium for for being able to express yourself so you started you walked into a, a dojo when you were 14 and how old were you when you played mike barnes I was 21, actually. Okay. So, yeah, I was 21. Uh, I Would had you... gone to school for two years at Boston University working on my political science degree. And then, you know, I knew I was going to have to go to New York or L.A. to pursue acting seriously. And I figured it would be easier to be broke where the weather's nice. And so I came up <laughs> to L.A. And I, I toured, uh, CLA and uh, finished my degree in political science at the same time as getting uh, Karate Kid 3. So it was like real nip and tuck, me graduating. And to this day, my father still thinks they're going to recount the uh, credits and find out it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so so he's got this wonderful career, you guys, and everybody needs to watch Studio City um, because it really is very, very fun and it's very well written and it's very well acted and Sean's great in it. And, and, and also, it's got an all-star wait, wait. cast. And Tristan Rogers, you know, who oh, we know. Fantastic. Wait, we know him socially. Yeah. And 
my God, Tristan just made you want to like Did that fall last apart. Scene break your heart? Fall apart. I mean, oh. he was just so pathetic and so, so, so not Tristan in the real world. There's Tristan in the real world is always laughing and smiling. I'm really, I'm really proud of that scene because we were really. <clears throat> and the close up was dangerous. My yeah. God, you went right into his paws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were really for time and we knew we had an idea of what we wanted the scene to be. And I, I went in a room and I, <clears throat> I wrote a scene for me and Tristan. And I would say that, that, you know, about 40% of, of what I wrote got into that scene, but you know, so much of it was Tristan's, you know, he's, he's, he's heartbreaking in, in this, in this show. And he's funny. And uh, Sarah Joy Brown, who plays my sister. I mean, I, you know, I'm so lucky to work with such good actors that uh, uh, it just elevates whatever we write is elevated and made better. So why That's don't you right. give give it like a little if you know every, the, the the people that are in the cast off the top of your head because I don't know all of them I know Carolyn Hennessy Patricia Darbo sure. sure so there's Carolyn Hennessy she plays uh, uh, the producer of the show within a show what a bitch what a bitch what and she's a so bitch. fun in real life I love I love, I love I love her I love her lines I love what she says to you she is oh, one God. fucking bitch she's so funny. Uh, she plays the producer of, of the show within a show called Hearts on Fire, which is the number two show in daytime. I play Sam Stevens. I'm the aging soap star. And, you know, you kind of think at the beginning that I've got the world by the tail and you learn very quickly that Sam is a very flawed guy who deals with all sorts of, uh, as we say in Yiddish, Michigas. And, um, That's right. And uh, Tristan plays my stepfather. Sarah Joy Brown, three-time Emmy Award winner, plays my sister. Patricia Darbo plays my mother. My stepdaughter, Julie, Juliet Vega, plays my maybe daughter. The DNA test hasn't come back yet. Um, uh, we got some other great actors. A uh, guy named Phil Bruin, who plays the, the handsome, younger doctor opposite me, who's my foil, and he's always nipping at my heels. Um, just, you know, we, we're really lucky to have a great cast, and, and these, these people are so dedicated. We, we managed to do five new episodes during COVID uh, under really difficult uh, restrictions, obstacles, challenges, and, and everybody just rallied. And I think, I think the net effect of that is that it really crystallized us as a cast. And, and, um, and you know, not the least of which is my wife, Michelle, who wears multiple hats in this as a writer. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang we gotta, on. We gotta let me take our no, wait a minute. I, wait a minute. A wheelchair comes into the scene and I'm crying. I'm laughing my ass off. Because it's, so it's Michelle too. with Michelle with the babachka on her head. No. <laughs> I was you cracking up laughing. Answer. I'm looking at my beautiful wife. And I know, but I, I cracked up, Sean, because she, she, said, she didn't say a word. She just looks so pathetic. <laughs> And, you know, when the camera was behind her, she would make faces at me like, like that. <laughs> she would, she would, That's she would. Do. And uh, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting and fun working with my wife uh, on a lot of different, uh, you know, on a lot of different levels. Absolutely. You should watch it, everybody. You'll enjoy it. Trust hey. me. I don't, I don't bullshit we anybody. We also want to give a shout out to Timothy Woodward Jr. because he's oh, a. Yeah. I know you've been. You've been. He's a phenomenal director. He makes great films, and you've been in because that was one of the films, the Beyond the Law. That was a. That was one of his films, right? Yeah, I've done. I've done two or three films with Tim. Yeah, he's, and, he's uh, fantastic. He, he's, he's directed all the episodes of Studio City, which I think gives it a really um, cinematic and homogeneous look. The episodes all have a, a, a very specific look to them. We've got a terrific uh, Spanish cinematographer named Pablo Diaz, uh, who is nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Lighting this year. And, um, I, you know, well, I, I have a question. I have a question. Why don't you use a steady cam? The camera shaking all the time was a little disconcerting for me you know, because no, I, li I like a why. steady I, shot. I, you know, I think, I think Tim and Pablo decided to do that because they wanted to create a very different look between when we're watching the soap opera within the show and then we're watching the real world outside and everything from, um, you know, there's, there really, well, I guess there is still music sometimes when you watch a soap opera, but we, you know, we have very different um, sound design when we're watching the soap opera, Hearts on Fire, and then this sort of very quick staccato 
um, music, almost a um, an entourage type type feel when we're in the the outside world. So actually, Sean, was- somebody in the chat, Miss Kim in the chat room says that Sean and Tristan are going to be at TerraCon in Connecticut, July thirtieth oh, to August first. TerraCon, yeah. Uh, oh, terrific! Yes. Uh, TerraCon. Okay. <laughs> at the Mohegan Sun, I believe it's, I believe it's July thirtieth to August. That's 1st. a very big casino, you know. Yeah, that's what Mohegan. I oh, it's gigantic. It's a beautiful casino. So Mohegan. everybody needs to get their tickets for Terrificon. And when you're there, you'll be able to get your own copy of Sean's brand new book, Way of the Cobra. Because right now, the only way you can get this phenomenal self-help, fabulous book is to go to wayofthecobra.com. And right. you can get a copy of the book. You can also get an autographed copy of the book. Um, it's fabulous, and we're going to let Sean tell you a little bit about it now. First of all, how much is the book? Everybody needs to know bucks, that. I think. Uh, the book's Tw- 25 bucks, and I think it's $50 if you get it autographed. And it's, there it's you go, folks. It, it's a collectible. It is worth every dime, and I'll tell you, I'm getting emails from people all over the world, <clears> and it's so humbling telling me that the information in this book has been absolutely transformative in their lives. Um, just, just to tell you a little about the book, it's, it's written under the structure that you're a student in my dojo, I'm the sensei, and I'm teaching you uh, Way of the Cobra. And Cobra is an acronym formed from the words character, optimization, balance, respect, and abundance. And oh, speak of the devil, Timothy Woodward's calling me. Hold on, I get it. Hey, hey Tim, you must, you must be psychic. I'm doing a, a podcast right now, and, and, we were just, and we were just talking, talking about, about you. We're talking about you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was just told. I was just told. Told to. What? Tell me. Wait. Tell me. What? I just got invited to be a presenter on the Emmy Awards Awards on CBS. Wow. You guys are hearing it here live. Uh, What did he? (laughs) What did he get? What? What? What happened? He got invited to be a presenter at the Emmy Awards on CBS. Oh, of course. Why not? Good. Now hang up and come back. Get rid of him. <laughs> hang up because I'm on, li- I'm on live and I was just talking about you. And I'll call you back ASAP. Bye. <laughs> that that's, that's terrific. Congratulations. Hey, hey, hey. No, I mean, you know, we're, we're like the little engine that could. You know, we're, we're a show. We don't have a big budget. We, we really do do this on a shoestring. And, um, you know, I, I, I've been on the big shows before and I kind of took it for granted that, you know, you know, when I was on General Hospital and I was on um, uh, Bold and the Beautiful, I, I was a presenter a couple times, and I never would have expected that, you know, being on our, our little show, that I would get to present on the actual CBS broadcast. So I am, I'm, I'm kind of digesting it, guys. It's, it's really Good humbling. You. It's terrific. Yay. You're going to be on the anim- enemas. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I to- the enemas. that's what I told Tristan. When Tristan won the Emmy, I yeah. wrote... I wrote to him. I said, uh, congratulations on winning the Enema. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Oh, oh Teresa, Teresa loved it. So let's uh, go back. Congratulations, wait, first of all. Let's go back, back to Way of the Cobra. Abundance. The Let me finish about the book. So, so here's the thing. Um, in the introduction of the book, I say, look, I, I got good news and I've got bad news. And if you're like me and Don Corleone, you insist on getting the bad news first. So here it is. I said, I don't have a silver bullet that is going to instantly transform you into that uber successful disciplined beast that we all want to be. And in the book, we call that being a cobra. And the tagline for the book is unleash your inner badass. The good news is that it's like the Zen riddle. How did the ship get in the bottle? It was already there. Everything you need is already within you. You just have to learn to let it out. And people say to me, well, how do you know this stuff works? And these are the battle tested strategies that I've used in my life to achieve some of my success. And about three years ago, I was in a place I think a, a lot of people can relate to. I was, um, I'd had some, I'd had some pretty significant success in my life. I had had some epic failures, some of which were very well publicized. And I was uh, 50, 50-ish years old, looking in the mirror going, what's next? What's my second act here? And I was 35 pounds overweight. I had no prospects for work. And I decided that I needed to start doing some things very quickly, very differently. And uh, I decided that rather than wait for my ship to come in, I was going to build the damn ship. And I just had to figure out how. And these are the actions that I took and the strategies that I took that really allowed me to turn things around. And in that one year, 
I co-authored uh, Success Factor X, my second book, which became an Amazon Prime new release. We got Studio City uh, on Amazon Prime, got nominated for eight Emmys, and I lost the 35 pounds. And I don't tell people that to impress them. I, I tell it to impress upon them what is possible if you're ready to make changes and to lead the life that you want to lead. I rebuild every year. Mm. I do. And on 81, I think I'm a pretty good structure that has been rebuilt, remanufactured, reinvented. I, I mean, I started off as an actor, became a drag queen and became an actor again and a television host right. of one of the most successful shows of which you never told the director you were speaking to the name of. <laughs> You yeah. said you said you were on a podcast. What you should have said was, "Excuse me, no, 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 no." You should have said, it. "I'm on the greatest, the greatest podcast show. ever Love. with Ron it's Russell, who is sensational and terrific and wonderful." And well, you guys and that have, guy yeah, and you guys should have Tim on because you know we're we're really lucky. This guy directed our episodes because he's directed probably 15 feature films uh, with some incredibly big stars. And, um, you know, for us to have a guy that's a, a feature film director that's doing these big films, he's, I think he's about to start one with Sam Elliott. And uh, he's, uh, you know, he's been wonderful to me, putting me in his films. But to have this guy directing ours is one of the reasons why the show, um, you know, has, has done as well as it has. So oh, I'm he's very... a cool guy. We met him. We've met him several times. We met him at the Studio City right. premiere. And we, we met, met him at the Success Factor X book signing. Right. And yep, uh, so a... listen up, everybody. So oh what, wait, wait. Right. I have something more to say. Meanwhile, I love the guy who used to be a woman and is now a man who oh is God, on I... your show. Oh, turn the show fan. Oh, I love him. I love him. He is the sweetest, the kindest, the most wonderful human being I've met in a long time. I can't stuff about T Scott Turner Schofield. Scott uh, is a male transgender actor. He is a, you know, he's he's not just a transgender actor. He's a brilliant actor. And he yes. is one of the strongest, most fearless people I know. And um, he was nominated, nominated for an Emmy. Emmy. Uh, and we are just so lucky to have him as a part of our cast and you know you know diversity is really important to us um it's important that we tackle socially relevant issues so we have a really strong uh, lgbtq storyline and we've dealt with stuff like me too and ageism and uh, uh all, all sorts of stuff and um you know we like to think we do it in a way where we're not beating you over the head because nobody wants to be preached to at the end of the day people want to be entertained but if we can make you think a little bit laugh a little bit maybe cry a little bit, then I think we're doing our job. You are you're doing your, you're doing your job. That's so hang what, on. That's so I want to go back to the book. So listen yeah. up, you guys. So the only way you can get the book, if you're not going to Terrificon, is to go to wayofthecobra.com. And I'm just sure. assuming you're going to have books with you at Terrificon. I don't know. I will. I will. <laughs> and, yeah. And we're, we're, we're holding off on putting it on Amazon for a while because we're in the process of building an extraordinary interactive Way of the Cobra website. And um, I want people to go get the book from the website uh, and it's going to have all sorts of opportunities to interact with me, to watch uh, uh, videos that put the lessons in the book into work and to uh, join uh, a weekly live meeting with me on a subscription basis where you're going to learn way of the Cobra straight from the sensei. I love it. So if you only have enough money to buy one book, you have to buy way of the Cobra. Now, if you have two, money to buy, if you have money to buy two books, then you want to go and get a copy of Success Factor X. Uh, Sean wrote this book with Jill Lieberman, and it's um, it's basically inspiration and wisdom and advice from 50 of America's best. And uh, Timothy, the director who just told him he's going to be at the Emmys, right, is in this. And all, all kinds of superstar Mark people are in this. Uh, Daryl McDaniels, founding member of Run DMC. Coach K from Duke. Uh, amazing. Tristan Rogers. Yeah, yeah, Tristan and, Rogers. You know, and they all share their their idea of success and some of the secrets that got them there. And it's really interesting when you start looking at common denominators that all these people from, you know, ostensibly different backgrounds have and that have had different journeys to achieve success, that they all use some of the same strategies. And it reminded me um, of something that my my acting teacher, the late Roy London, used to say. He said, I have more in common 
with a successful plumber than I do with an unsuccessful acting coach. And I thought about that for a while. And it's because some of the very same things that it takes to be a successful plumber are the same things it takes to be a successful baseball player or acting. It's successful or anything. Success is success. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And, and exactly. Sean Kanan gave us this book free and he signed it. And I'm willing to sell it to you for $15. <laughs> yeah, right. No, going back to Success Factor X, you guys, the added bonus of this book after <clears throat> you bought Way of the Cobra is the fact that I actually wrote the forward to this book. He asked me to write the forward. Right. Oh my God, how could I not even say that? Of course you it did. Was a, it was a total honor, and I was super happy about and it. Jimmy and Jimmy got great reviews and about I got, it. Yeah, my, 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 uh, and I was amazed. I read it, and I said, he can spell. <laughs> well, and then, so now, if you have, now if you have, after you've bought the two books, uh, in the order, Way of the Cobra and then Success Factor X, the first time we met Sean, he had another book. It was called The Modern Gentleman, Cooking and Entertaining with Sean Kanan, How to Be a Gentleman and Actually, you know, Take Care of Your Your Lady. And uh, and so you can get that one, and that one's on Amazon, too, because I don't know. Does that, have a, does that have its own website or no? Is that on just on Amazon? Uh, you can uh, – I believe you can get that at, at – uh, what's my – I always forget this website my wife made for me. I think it's called uh, <laughs> uh, SeanKananActor.com, I think. Just – you know what? Uh, you go on Amazon and you can get it. Amazon.com. But again, the first one you got to get is Way of the Cobra. That's yeah, the, yes, that's but the, the, the first the, the first book. book he ever did was when he was the centerfolder in Play. What's it called? Centerfold, Ron. I was Wait, Playman? Playman? You were the cover? I was you were the not, the, not the centerfold? All right, here's what No, I was afraid where they put the staple. Look, here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, wait a minute. What, what magazine? That's Playboy, not Playboy. Play, Playgirl, Playgirl. Play yeah, you know what happened so, was I, I just joined General Hospital, and they grabbed me and Steve Burton and I, one other guy, and they said we're going to do a photo shoot for Playgirl. You got, like, the, I was going to be boxing. One of the other guys is riding a horse, whatever. And I never in a million years thought that they would call me and say we're choosing you to be on the cover. And um, I, I was. A lot of different weird feelings, but um, yeah, they put me on the cover. I was not naked inside, but um, uh, you know, it, it it was flattering, I guess. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I was on the cover of a magazine in drag as Jane, Ru no, as Jane Russell. I think it was Newsweek magazine, in Long oh, wow. Island. I have it somewhere in my collection of junk. It's a beautiful picture of me. I mean, with a thing with the very. I'll show it to you when you come. So, oh, yeah. so let's let okay. Now it's time to do some hypothetical <clears throat> stuff because we don't get to do this often. No, we are trying to. So uh, everybody, get the books. Watch Studio City. Okay, so now you've you've had a a, a, a crazy successful career, um, but let's put a bucket list thing now together. So so you could you could act uh, and you've worked with so many big people. But let's say you could like a movie role came and you could choose whoever you were going to work with, male and female, actor and actress. Who are two people that would be on your bucket list and you're like, holy shit, I'd really love to work with. Blank. Oh, that's Ron Russell. What else? Uh, well, that, yeah, that's happening. So that's not on the bucket list. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. I would say that um, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yes. Somebody I would really good, love to good, work with. Good, good choice. Um, and honestly, um, you know, I, I would like to, I would like to work with Daniel Day Lewis. I'd like to see, um, you know, pushing myself into something that, you know, the, the discipline and transformation that would probably be required to be in one of his movies, um, I would like the opportunity to, you know, really stretch my boundaries. Um, one, of the greatest, one of the greatest actors of all time. I mean, he is such a great probably actor. Is, probably is the greatest actor of, of maybe all time. Um, as far as females, as far as actresses, um, I really like Kate Blanchett. I think she love you. Kate. Yay. Love Kate. Love her. I'd love terrific. to work with her. Um, I, I like, I like, uh, I mean, Jodie Foster is, is, is phenomenal. Um, uh, oh, yeah, Jodie Foster would be, a and, you know, too. listen, I know, I know she's, she's up there, but just, I mean, it would be amazing to work with Sophia Loren. I just think I, I did. I did. Did you really? 1959 look it up that kind of woman i played a soldier tab hunter was her love interest and sophia and ron spoke Sp italian so we got to talk to her and, and i got to speak oh. to her in italian and you know what she said to me your italian is as bad as my english and she was as sweet as could be three days shoot once in central park and once in grand central Amazing. station 
And then she kissed me on my cheek when I when we left and I ran home and I told my parents I will never wash my face. (laughs) <laughs> because Sophia, she was lovely and wonderful. She was only 26 no, years she's old. She's a good one. That's she good was case. 26 years old. I'd love you know, to work with her again now. Oh. Uh, Carlo huh? Ponti, who was a producer, a very famous Italian producer, discovered her, I don't know, when she was hanging up clothes when she was 17 in Pozzuole. And I've been to Pozzuole. No, no, no. She was, four, she was 14. 14. And 14 when he discovered her and she won wallpaper in a beauty contest and Ponti saw her and uh, he changed her name from, uh, I forgot what it was, something, to Lauren because of the movie star Martha Torrin. And um, Sophia loved him for always. Carrie Grant, Carrie Grant was in love with her and they were supposed to have a big affair. But Ponti told Sophia that Carrie was gay and I think Sophia got chased away by that otherwise maybe she would have married carrie grant because she was very much in love with him see the little hollywood gossip stories i mean you really do need to write a book ron nobody would believe my book they think i was full of shit with all the stories i have because my stories are so intimate for some reason when people meet me they tell me that all their bullshit the truth i have that kind of personality they meet me and in 10 minutes i know all their shit she was sophia villani Ciccoloni or something like that. Yeah, wow. Sophia Ciccoloni. I like love it. Okay, so now, okay, so now you pick the different actors and actresses. Now let's say uh, time hasn't has stood still, and you could be in any movie that's ever been made in the history of movies. What movie would you like to have been the star of? Gladiator. Oh, would you really? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, but, you know. You get to do all the great sandals and sand and blood stuff, but there's beautiful dramatic moments in that movie. Uh, yeah, you, know, you just want to show your big arm. <laughs> um, I just thought it was an amazing movie. Um, Actually, uh, the, the 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 guy who the guy who plays the big gladiator that has to fight Russell Crowe, the big muscle older guy, uh, he's a good friend of ours. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sven Thorson, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Sven Thorson, yeah. yeah. So he's been on the show, and I'm really good friends with his wife. They're yeah. sweetie and, uh, pie. They're like you and Michelle. They're so sweet. I'll tell you another one I really would have loved to have done uh, is either Cool Hand Luke or Cat in a Hot Tin Roof. Cat in a Hot Tin Roof, roof I would like to see you in. Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, you know, I'm a little long in the tooth probably now to do it. In a no, play. no, Maybe no, not really. Not really. They put, just uh, do an older, an older wife. Yeah. What do you, what do you think of uh, Mira's uh, uh, Mira Sorvino? Yeah. Do you think I, she would? Do you think her, we should contact no, 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 her to play? No, no. Mo- we don't talk about that on air. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I think she's pretty good. Yes, fan. I think so too. I am too. I think she's fabulous. Daughter. <laughs> like, okay. Did you hear what I said, Sean? Daughter. Yep, I heard okay. daughter. Uh, I like anyway. because I love him. And I have to call him, as I said to Wait, you. I'm saying that wait- the other day, you have to call Paul Sorvino. Well, you know, I'm waiting for Lainey to get back. Lainey Kazan is the hottest woman to reach in the world. I'm sa- I am re- I just sent her a message. I said, Lainey, I'm so happy your box is always filled. <laughs> but I want to get, you know, I text messaged her. What and I- <laughs> No, she's, she's always, she is the worst person to con everybody. Listen. Two of my friends dealt with her, and they said she's impossible to contact. And she is. She our doesn't. Fans, our fans in the chat room say Cool Hand Luke. They like Cool Hand Luke. Somebody yeah. wrote Streetcar Named Desire. Oh, Tina wrote the Streetcar Named Desire. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Know. Yeah. You know, I love a lot of those uh, those classics. I Paul Newman is is I'd say Paul Newman's arguably my favorite my favorite actor. Um, you know, Sweet Bird of Youth. I mean, it's just oh, uh, I love Sweet Bird of Youth. I'd like to see you in that. Yeah, that was that, that was. Oh, that's a piece of work, baby. I would love to have played when I was young. Yeah, you could have done that. I could have done Sweet. I'm, I would have been on the George Hamilton type, or what's his name the, that played it? Who played it with uh, Geraldine Page? It was Geraldine Page, Paul Newman, and then Rip Torn was in it. Right. I knew Rip. I knew Rip Torn. Oh my God! I forgot I ever knew him. Yeah. I no. I knew him years ago. Rip Torn. Yes, because I said to him, I think when I met him, I have a needle and thread. If you're interested. <laughs> he has and, I, and he didn't get it. 
But anyway, Rip Torn, yes, I remember him. He was good looking, nice looking fellow when he was yeah, young. He was Rip, Rip, Rip Torn. Jeez, how you forget people. What kind of like stuff, like if, would you watch a lot of TV or no? I do. I do watch a lot of TV. Like what um, kind of stuff do you like to watch? Like we just watched the Kaminsky Method. We like that. that I love cool. the Kaminsky Method. I mean, uh, it, it, you know, as, as a guy that went to so many acting classes in Los Angeles, I, I really could see what an amalgamation of several different acting teachers Kaminsky is, and it really resonated with me. Um, we're, we're also watching watch, Hacks. We're also watching Hacks. Have you seen Hacks on HBO Max? Hacked. No, it's Hacks. Hack. Maybe it's just Hack. It's ha H A C K E D Hack. No, it's not. I haven't seen that yet. Um, I, Gene, I, you you should watch it because it's about a comedian and you would like it. Uh, like it's comedian it's called Smart. it's called hacked, not hacks. I'm, I'm deep Look it up. It's 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 because that she was a comedian. The comedian short name is hacked. You're a hacked comedian. Hacked. Oh, you'll uh, see. It's it's H A C K E D. Seven of ninety day fiance. That's the kind. Oh, of there you go. It's it's hacked. The right H A C K S hacks. H A C K S hacks. Okay. Yeah, you'll like it though. It's because it's a com. It's a comedy with uh, Jane, Jane Smart Jane, Jane is Smart. wonderful. Jane, Jane Smart. Jane, Jane Smart. Jane Smart. That's what I said. <laughs> I would love to work with Jane Smart. So wait, wait. So you watch Ninety Day Fiance? Oh my God! I like it. Look, it yeah, it's really good TV. <laughs> it's you get what this. I mean, the premise is these people come over on a K one visa, right? And they've got ninety days to figure out if they're going to get married to the person. And I mean, could you imagine the pressure cooker of somebody usually from a different culture? Um, you know, the you know the friends all think most of the girls are gold diggers, and I mean, everyone thinks they're doing it for a green card. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, but it 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 pressurizes all the difficulties and challenges and high notes and low notes of a relationship compressed into ninety days, and it's it's like you know. I'm at the point now where we watched the first couple seasons for free, and then we finally turned, okay, oh my god, we gotta pay for this season. Michelle and I looked at each other and went, do it. And it's so <laughs> like, <laughs> but those girls that come over to find husbands, if the husbands look like you, they don't mind. Oh, but you know, a lot of them come over. What do you mean, stop it? You're ugly? <laughs> now you want to say you're ugly? Sean, I see you in person, close up. And you are still, I think what's happening to you now is you're getting handsomer. You showed me a picture of you as a boy and you thought, wow. And I said to myself, nah, no character. Now you're developing character. You're getting to be substance. Um, you're a young man yet, you know, you're going to age beautifully. Thank if you, you listen, if, you, if I give you my beauty I tips. You, right? I use the right products. I'll give you all my he beauty use tips. Any products. He just puts olive oil on no, his face. olive oil on my face and never say you're old and never grow old and will it away. That's say right. I refuse to age. And you know what? The brain hears it, the body responds. So you guys no, really you know have you know, with, with few exceptions, like a couple aches and pains from you know a, a lot of athletics and stuff. Um I I don't know that I would want to really go back. I mean, everyone always says, sure, I'd go back if I knew now what I knew then. Well, it doesn't work that way. And No, you know, it there's, doesn't. There's a level of comfort in your own skin that hopefully people achieve as they get older because, you know, in my 20s and 30s and even in a part of my 40s, you know, uh, there were just parts of my personality that were still so insecure and uncomfortable. And, you know, we all, we all still have insecurities, but... You know, you know, you, you kind of learn that you don't give a fuck as you get older. And Sean, listen to me. We only got like 30 in your fifties, you come into your own. Thank you. It starts in your fifties. That's when you will come into your own and your personality and your everything just changes. Be, be, younger than fifty is dangerous. What do you want? I we gotta go. Oh, I agree. I, so I don't want to go. Oh, I gonna... know we can't help it. We don't have time. So listen up, everybody. First of all, I agree with you, and I, I think I'm way more comfortable in my fifties than I've ever been. Right. Um, but um, so you guys listen. Uh, up. And I can't Sean, wait to get to be 50 to Sean, see if it's right. true. <laughs> follow Sean Kanan on Twitter. You guys, he's at Sean Kanan on Instagram. He's Sean.Kanan. Go to wayofthecobra.com. Get your copy of the book um, and uh, look for Studio And I hope Amazon to see Prime. you very soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So we want to thank everybody. No, we're don't good. We're don't good. stay a stranger. Don't, don't <laughs> stay. Anything, no, no, we're no, good. We're good. No, no. Meanwhile, that, that, that. Hey, thank you that, so much. Thank you to everyone in the green room. You guys, wishing you all the best, and uh, everybody stay safe. And um, thanks so much for for all the support for us and for Jimmy and for Ron. Take there you care. Go. Thanks, Sean. See you soon. All right, everybody. Thanks Take so care, much. baby. Love to Michelle. Show. We want to thank thanks to all our guests. Thanks to the chat room. Thanks to everybody listening. Hope you guys enjoy the show. We had a great time, and we'll see you guys soon next week, everybody. Bye. Bye. Woo. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. 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 Jimmy, bitch, I'm your one I wanna be. Jimmy, stop, new celebrity. We'll take you out.